So we will discuss today overfitting and underfitting. For this what we will do is that we will go through a couple of slides and then we will come back to this page. So we know while training um, we have a training data and a validation data. So when we train we have seen that the Keras history object has a training loss and the validation loss. So how can the training loss and the validation loss help us in making the training better? So if we plot the loss versus epochs, we see that the training loss decreases as the epochs increase. But the validation loss decreases to some point and then again increases. So the most important thing here is that when we see unseen data, the validation loss will give us an estimate of the expected error. The training loss is not going to give the estimate of the expected error. So we must try to reduce the validation loss. Okay. Now Another concept that is very much said is an underfitting model and an overfitting model. An underfitting model is one which do not learn the, uh, uh, the data very much. So for example here we see that, uh, let's put the pointer. So this is the actual curve and the model that we have done is this straight line. It has not learned anything. Whereas the other extreme is that the true curve is this one and this curve which, uh, which is a fitted curve is so zigzag that it has learned it too much. The problem with the underfitting data was that the model did not learn much of the data but the overfitting model is that, that it has learned a lot but it will fail to generalize when it sees the unseen data. So let's take an analogy. Uh, say suppose I am going to give an exam on say some subject and I uh, read 50 questions, right? And I know the answers to those 50 questions, but I do not know the exact concept of the subject. So what would happen, I go to the exam, if any of those 50 questions come, then I'll just ace it. But since I do not know the concepts, if there is any other question which comes, which is slightly outside those 50 questions, I will not be able to answer it. So the, that concept is like an overfitting model. The overfitting model learns the data, the existing data a lot, but it fails to generalize. So our intention is to create a model which generalizes on unseen data, but at the same time learns a lot of the patterns of the data. So how do we do that? So let's go back and... Uh, so one of the techniques that people do is to, to increase the capacity of the model. So what do you mean by the capacity of the model? Either you increase the number of neurons in the layer, that is the uh, width of the model, or you increase the depth of the model by adding more layers. So, say suppose we have this model with a dense layer of 16 neurons. So, the wider network will have 32 neurons, which is greater than the 16 neurons. But the, the deeper network will have more layers and it will have more and more layers than the uh, actual model. What you will see is that the deeper model, because of these activations, which will learn the more non-linear ones, but the wider network would have an easier time learning more linear relationships. So what is early stopping. This is a very important concept. So uh, one thing that you will see is that we come back to the our previous figure with the loss and the epochs. 
the training loss decreases as the number of uh, epochs increase continuously but the validation loss it decreases till a certain point and then it rises so we need to stop where it is the optimum point at this point out here so this is called the early stopping so how do we do that Keras has provided certain very good functions for that so there is a concept of a callback in function in Keras so what is a callback? A callback is just a function you want to run every often while the network trains. The early stopping callback will run after every epoch. So here's the early stopping callback and it has three parameters. What it would do is that it has a mean delta which is 0 0.001, the patient's is 20 and the restore best weights is true. So what does these parameters say? If there hasn't been at least an improvement of 0 0.01 in the validation loss over the previous 20 epochs, then stop the training and keep the best model you found. <clears throat> so that's it. So if it doesn't increase 0 0.001 in the validation loss, over the previous 20 epochs then we stop the training and we'll keep the best model so that's that's where this concept is coming into picture so we'll stop it down here you see the validation loss is increasing so we'll stop at this point so this is an example in which you train a model with early stopping uh, this part has already been discussed but still we will repeat, so we will read the wine data set, we will divide the training and the validation set with 70% as training and 30% as uh, validation. We scale it and then we do a callback which we discussed previously and when we fit the model, we put the callback as the early stopping and we see that uh, though we have said it is 500 epochs what we will see is that the training stopped before the full 500 epochs because the validation loss did not uh, increase uh, decrease after say around 50 or 60 epochs so thank you hope you liked it bye